My name is Steve Schwartz. I've been coaching the LSAT for over 10 years now. I run the LSAT blog. I also host the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast, and I, I do this full time. I love it. I'm releasing new videos every day. You can check out the channel at youtube.com slash LSAT blog, and you can find the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and pretty much everywhere else. Well, they started the writing, the digital writing sample in June, but the actual digital LSAT administration itself is starting in July, July 15th specifically. A half of test takers will receive the digital format, half will receive the paper and pencil format. This is, this is considered an educational best practice when transitioning to a new testing format. It will be on a tablet, Microsoft Surface Go specifically. And then starting in September, it will be digital for everyone in North America with the exception of maybe a few accommodated test takers, but the vast majority of students will receive the digital format starting this fall and beyond. Well, the July LSAT, it might be a little bit nerve wracking to not know which format you're going to get, but at the same time, LSAC has, a stat, uh, has extended a few olive branches to those taking in July to help kind of ease the way. First off, they're letting July test takers see their score before deciding whether to cancel, which is not normally the case. This is, this is a one-time exception to that rule. And on top of that, LSAC is giving anyone who cancels the July LSAT a free retake on a future LSAT test administration. So their July is kind of like a freebie and anyone who cancels the July LSAT specifically, I think law schools aren't really gonna care that much because so many folks will be canceling July given the incentive to do so to be getting a free retake. So. I honestly don't think it's that much of a thing to worry about and the content's not changing, only the style in which it's delivered is changing and you can get a tablet, you could borrow a friend's iPad or use a Samsung or whatever you like, doesn't really matter. You can still use that digital LSAT familiarization tool just the same. You can honestly replicate a lot of it just using, if you have access to the PDFs, you can replicate it just having the PDFs on the screen and having your scratch paper to the side. But for students who want to really practice like it's game day, yeah, get a tablet. And I don't love telling people to go out and spend money on electronics they don't really need, but you don't need to buy a Microsoft Surface Go specifically. Any old tablet will do. You can get an Amazon Fire tablet for like 150 bucks and then return it after the LSAT if you decide that is not for you. And then just play around with the three exams currently on LSAC's familiarization tool site. They'll be releasing more in the future. And of course, we've all seen the exams in the 70s before, but for our students, we can encourage them, hey, don't do exams 71, 73, and 74, and whatever they might release in the future, save those for your tablet practice. And then for the rest, just use PDFs and the scratch paper. That'll be good enough, I think. I don't wanna overly harp on the problems with this. There are some benefits. I also love the bubbling aspect. You can bubble it with one click or one touch of the screen, that probably saves you a minute or two per section. That's huge, I think. But this is actually getting hyper efficient where your tablet, when you when you start off, it's gonna pop up with your photo that you uploaded to their, their website previously. So it's a little bit big brotherish and kind of weird, but at the same time, if it saves you time bubbling, maybe it's worth it. It's not for everybody. You've gotta put in the work first on your end. I recommend you you've identify your weak areas and focus on those. And once you've done that, then you can bring your hardest problems to a coach and say, I want to work on these specific question types, these exact practice problems. I've done the work on my end first. I've learned the basics. I've reviewed whatever free material you've already put out. And then I'm coming to you to go to the next level beyond that. But you've got to do the work on your end first. If someone's coming to me, they want me to teach them the entire curriculum. That's not really good use of either of our time, especially when someone else, so much else is out there available already for free or for a low cost. So if, you do, if you've done the work first on your end, then you can come to a coach, but I'd say otherwise you may not be ready yet. I've completely redesigned my LSAT courses and coaching around the digital LSAT because it will re require the adjustment of a lot of strategies. But on the YouTube channel and podcast LSAT Unplugged, I'm putting out tons of free resources about how to adjust your study strategies for the digital LSAT for games, reasoning and reading comp between how to use the scratch paper efficiently as well as how to use LSAC's tools like highlighting and underlining all those various annotation tools they have that you can look at on familiar.lsac.org, how best to use them and also when not to use them. So check those out if you're looking for more.